Glory be to God Almighty. Shall we pray, please? Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy is my Lord. You are holy. You are wonderful, 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 wonderful is my love. You are wonderful, 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 wonderful. Wonderful is my love. The ancient of days. We say thank you to you, sir. Thank you for what you did during the Holy Ghost service in January year 2023. Thank you for what we are going to do during this service tonight father accept our thanks in the name of jesus father lord we pray that the end of the ministration tonight your name alone will be glorified bless your people my father in jesus name we are prayed god bless you in the name of jesus christ I'm grateful to the Almighty God and to our Father in the Lord, the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, for giving me the opportunity to stand before the High, the Mighty, and the Almighty God Himself. My duty is very simple. I'm to give you a fish. Daddy will come later to give you a fishing net. This February, anything or anyone that will not allow you rest will be laid to rest in the name of Jesus. The theme is Wonderful, part two. And tonight we shall focus on the nature of God. The nature of God. By the nature of God, I mean the fundamental qualities or characteristics of God. You agree with me that God is merciful. God is powerful. God is faithful. And he is wonderful. His love is unquestionable. His power is unconquerable. His impact is unmistakable. His mystery is unexplainable. His sacrifice is incomparable. His promises are indisputable. And his gifts are indescribable. He's the sole owner of glory. Please, wherever you are, help me give him the glory. Glory be to God Almighty. The nature of God. Number one, God is omnipotent. He is all powerful. He has power or ability to do all things, including things that are considered impossible or irreversible or irredeemable or irrevocable or irrepairable. He has power to do all these things. Psalm chapter 62 verse 11. Psalm 62 verse 11 tells me that power belongeth unto God. Power to do all things. In Luke chapter 1 verse 37, 
Luke 1, 37, an angel said, for with God nothing shall be impossible. Jeremiah 32, verse 17, Jeremiah 32, 17 says, there is nothing too hard for God. Luke chapter 18, Luke chapter 18, verse 27 says, the things which are impossible with men are possible with God. In Jeremiah 32, 27, Jeremiah 20, 32, 27, God, the Igwe of all Igwe, spoke. He says, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Can you please answer that question? God is not stingy or is not ungenerous with his power. So I want to appeal to you, my fathers and my mothers, my brothers and sisters. Don't write your conclusion yet. Because your present location is not going to be your final destination. Before February expires, in your life, in your families, in your country, in will shall in the name of Jesus Christ. Number two, this wonderful God is omnipresent. He's omnipresent. In other words, he's all present everywhere. His presence can provoke the miraculous. And it's going to happen tonight in the name of Jesus. I read John chapter 2. John chapter, John chapter 2, the first 10 verses. At a wedding function in Canaan of Galilee, Jesus was present. When the wine was exhausted, Jesus was engaged. And he rescued them from shame. He gave them better wine in mark chapter 4 mark chapter 4 verse 39 jesus was present when the disciples experienced a terrible storm jesus was engaged he spoke the storm heard his word and it ceased immediately Psalm 107 tells me in verse 29 psalm chapter 107 verse 29 says he maketh the storm a calm so that the waves thereof are still. Tonight, this wonderful God will still the storm in your lives in the name of Jesus. Also, at the tomb of Lazarus, in John chapter 11, verses 43 and 44, John the 11th chapter, verses 43 and 44, Jesus was present. He called Lazarus by name. The grave heard his word, and it released Lazarus immediately. I pray for you, my fathers and my mothers. Anything that is still holding you captive, we hear the word of God this night, and you will be released in the name of Jesus. You will be released in the name of Jesus. You will be set free in the name of Jesus. I have good news for you. I have good news for you. Jesus is in our midst right now. Matthew chapter 18 is my witness. Matthew the 18th chapter verse 20 says, For we are two or three are gathered together. In my name, they are mine in the midst of them. Jesus is here right now. I say Jesus is here right now. And he's going to perform wonders in our lives. Or oh, sorry, he's going to perform wonders in my life. But I want you to pay attention, please, to these three possibilities. Possibility number one, one can abide in the presence of God. Possibility number two, his presence can depart from anyone, God forbid. When his presence departed from King Saul, Saul became mentally unbalanced. Possibility number three, one can depart from the presence of God. Cain did, and he became a vagabond. I pray for you tonight. 
God's presence will never depart from you. You too will not depart from the presence of the Lord in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then number three, we are still talking about the nature of God. This wonderful God is omniscient. Or you call omniscience, omniscient. He is all-knowing. He has infinite or seemingly unlimited knowledge or understanding. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the details of your life. He knows your ways. He knows your thoughts. He knows your imagination. He said, many eyes look, but few eyes see. God knows and he sees everything, including what we do in secret. So be careful. Number four, God is om omnibenevent. Omni benevolent, sorry. He is all loving. Someone said you can love without giving. Or sorry, you can give without loving. But you cannot love without giving. God, this wonderful God is all loving. It is his nature. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus is a gift that produces other gifts. For instance, he came from heaven to the earth so that we can move from the earth to heaven. Can somebody help me say thank you, Jesus? Jesus, the Son of God, became the Son of Man so that we can become the sons of God. Can somebody help me say thank you, Jesus? Jesus was rich. Yet, for your sakes, the Bible says he became poor, that ye through his poverty might become rich. Can somebody help me say thank you, Jesus? Thank you, Jesus. Say it, say it from the bottom of your heart. Then number five, God is holy. It is his nature. In fact, the Bible says he's glorious in holiness. That is found in Exodus chapter 15, verse 11. Exodus chapter 15, verse 11 says, We like unto thee, O Lord, we like unto thee. Please join me. O Lord, among the gods, who is like thee, glorious in holiness, and fearful in praises do in wonders hallelujah all of you that joined me to sing that song before you leave this ground tonight god will perform wonders in your lives god is holy is glorious in holiness. It is his nature. First Peter 1 Peter 1.16 says, Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14, Hebrews 12, 14 says, Follow peace with all men, and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Brethren, who you follow determines what follows you. Then finally, number six, God is not a man. I'm sure you know that. His ways and thoughts are different. Isaiah chapter 55 verse 8 is my witness. Isaiah 55 verse 8 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways. My ways saith the Lord. God is not a man. Man can fail, but God cannot fail because God is not a man. Man can lie. We are still talking about the nature of this wonderful God. Man can lie, but God cannot lie because he is not a man. Numbers 23. Verse 19. 
If he says he will do anything, believe him, he will do it. Provided you play your own role. Man can forsake or abandon you. But God cannot forsake you. Because God is not a man. Psalm 37, 25 tells me so. Psalm chapter 37, verse 25. It says, I've been young and now I'm old. Yet, have I not seen the righteous forsaken? Nor is seed begging bread. My brothers and sisters, my fathers and my mothers, I told you earlier, my duty is very simple on this altar. I'm to give you a fish. Our daddy in the Lord is coming to give you a fishing net. I beg you in Jesus' name, grab that net. Grab that net. Because I know he's going to make another call. For those of you who must surrender your life to Christ before you leave today, that is your own fishing net. Please grab it. Make sure you surrender your life to Christ. In life without Christ, we suffer crisis. In life without Christ, we become a spectator when others are receiving. In the name of Jesus, you will never be a spectator. And then let us listen to the conclusion. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 is the conclusion. What do we have in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13? The Bible says, let us listen or let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Fear God and keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man. Before we pray, I want you to know, just as we said, concerning the nature of God, we said God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. He possesses the power, the ability to do all things, including your own. In fact, you can begin to celebrate up front. Because whether you believe it or not, this year you will rejoice and you will, people will congratulate you. Doors of opportunities will open unto you. God will give you better stories to tell. It will open new chapters for you. You will change position in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All your mockers will bow to your maker in the name of the Lord Jesus. We said God is omnipresent. In other words, he's all present. Everywhere. And I told you he's here right now. And wherever he is, he yanu must shell it. I also told you that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows the ending from the beginning. And I said God is omni-benevolent. He's all-loving. He loves you. He loves me. And that's the reason he had brought you and I to this location today. Despite all the, the hindrances, shortage of cash, shortage of fuel, but we thank God for availability of life. It's all loving. And we, tell, we told you that God is holy. He's holy. He's glorious in holiness. And finally, I told you that God is not a man. His ways and his thoughts are different. So I don't know what man must have said. The unchangeable changer is here tonight. It's going to change your stories. It's going to give you a better story to tell in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Shall we please rise for prayers? The first prayer point is a prayer of thanksgiving. I want you to say, Father, I thank you for everything you've done for me and for everything you've done through me. Please take the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Brethren, God is the owner of glory. He's the sole owner. Give him the glory for what he has done for me and for what he has done through me. Father, please take the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. I want you to cry on to God and say, Father. Oh, let God hear your voice. Say, Father. 
I need an encounter tonight. Please let me encounter you tonight in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me receive my own fishing net. Isn't, even as the word will be coming forth from your son. My Lord, give me my own fishing net in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, give me my own fishing net through your son tonight. I want to encounter you in a different way. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name forever. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father Almighty God, again, we want to say thank you, sir. Lord, we are grateful for this wonderful, this unique, this unusual, and this uncommon Holy Ghost service. We thank you for great and mighty things you will do tonight. My Lord, after tonight, our lives will begin to advertise you. People will begin to see your handwriting in every area of our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As a result of the blessings we are going to receive today. My Father. Our lives will advertise you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we say thank you very much. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. God bless you. Please be seated.